Wait a second. That's not right. Let's talk about counterfeits. Hi there everyone, welcome to Ravenous Babble. My name is Dan, and I'll be your host today. Now, counterfeits are a problem in every TCG. One way or another, eventually, counterfeits arise. Now whether they're good or bad, uh, that varies from game to game. Unfortunately, the counterfeits in Flesh and Blood are pretty, pretty above par. Um, if you don't know how to tell them apart, you will get tricked. The, the feel of them is not substantially different, and between the different print runs in Belgium and Japan, I would not go off a feel test. If you're very experienced, you might be able to kind of catch something and, and get suspicious about it, but it's not something I'd rely on. So, in this video I'm going to go over methods to tell if your cards are authentic, or if they're counterfeit. And when I talk about counterfeit cards, I'm talking about things like Command and Conquer, I'm talking about things like I have a Fidia. Yeah, they counterfeit foils too. Um, it's a lot of high end cards Command and Conquer, Art of War, Enlightened Strike, all the Fabled's, Legendary Equipment. You name it, they can probably counterfeit it. So uh, let's get started. All right, let's check out this pair of Command and Conquers. I want to bring your attention specifically to the resource symbol and the three crescents that lie within. You'll see that the crescents here are a bit thinner and the crescents here are a bit thicker. You can also notice a thinner, thicker similarity with the number two that's within the resource symbol. Now I find this to be the best way to tell at face value without any other tools. The top one here is real and the bottom one is fake. Now the same can be said for any resource symbol on the card. So let's look at the pitch values. You can see that the bottom one, the fake one, kind of looks more detailed. But you can see that it has thinner crescents while the top one has thicker crescents. It might be harder to make out, but the top one is in fact authentic while the bottom one is a counterfeit. Now you can use this test anywhere on the card if there is a resource symbol to look at. Now let's move on to the next test. For this next test you will need a jeweler's loop, a tool that every TCG player should have if you plan on spending any high amount of money on cards. I apologize that the camera will be a little bit shaky. I had to hold the camera with the jewelers loop up to the camera lens so that we could get in here together to look at the print patterns. Now this is an authentic card. If you look at the printing pattern you can see it just looks like a bunch of dots. Okay. And if we move over to the fake one you'll notice that it has more of a rosette pattern, a traditional rosette pattern. Actually, if you look at the front of a flesh and blood card, it'll have this exact pattern. So I don't know if this was intentional on LSS's part, but if it was, good on them. Another failsafe on the back of a card is the LSS abbreviation that is hidden in the top left in the border. And also, a little bit below the middle right within the design, you'll see the line break there. See that? 
Now if you zoom in, it should look remotely like the letters LSS. It's not always perfect, and it does vary print to print, you know, location to location, but it should look remotely like some letters. Now if you compare it to the counterfeit, it's a lot more legible. The counterfeit doesn't really look like anything. Maybe a cross mark, maybe a dot, but definitely not the letters LSS. So if you have a jeweler's loop, this is by far the best way to test the authenticity of your cards. All right, so this next test is not one that I would recommend, as I mentioned earlier. It's the field test. These counterfeits feel pretty good. They feel pretty authentic. And honestly, the feel of a card can vary from printing to printing. So two out of 10, don't recommend. <laughs> Now this next part here isn't a great test, but you can kind of tell if you look at the cards in a good light that the authentic card, which is on the left, has more vivid colors in comparison to the counterfeit on the right. You can kind of tell the same on the back. The counterfeit on the right just looks more washed out. Not the best test, but it is another way to check if your cards are real or not. Alright, now let's talk about foils. We have a pair of Eye of Aphidia here. It's a very expensive card. So for this I want you guys to look at the foiling process specifically. See how this has a lot of depth to it? If you look at the eye itself, the foiling covers the chain and the eye. This is an authentic copy. If we look at the counterfeit copy, it still hits the chain in the eye, but the foiling is very flat and just kind of covers the whole thing. Now for these, Fabled in particular, and Arc Knight Shard and Heart of Fyandal, you can use the resource symbol test as well. And for Eye of Aphidia, the authentic card was not printed with a Fabled symbol. I don't know if they ever corrected that, but the counterfeit one has a Fabled symbol, so that's another easy tell. Just keep an eye out. Now there's one more foil that I want to talk about. This one is a counterfeit. I do not have an authentic copy. This is a promo fade for scene. It's extremely rare, and as of the recording of this video, it's worth around $500. So if you have purchased one recently, please, please do your due diligence. Run the tests that I have explained and make sure it's real. You won't want to get ripped off on something like this. You want to be looking at the resource symbols, both at the top here, and you better have a loop if you're buying something like this, because you'll want to check the LSS abbreviations on the back. Alright, so hopefully I was able to provide you with some useful knowledge and if you can take anything away from this video, if you don't already have one, get a jeweler's loop. This kind is about 7 to $10 on Amazon, I'm not too sure, but I'll link it in the description down below. This is a priceless tool if you're buying high-end cards for any trading card game, but especially for flesh and blood, based on the methods I showed you. Um, that's it. Stay safe out there with your purchases, alright? You have a great day, and remember, keep playing great games. I'll catch you next time.